Now today we're going to make a jam cake using a white layer cake and Christy's going to show us how. Julia, a white layer cake is a really elegant cake. It's characterized by this pure white color, a really delicate texture, and a fine crumb. That's why they use white layer cakes for a lot of wedding cakes. Now, the method can be a little fussy. Our method's easier, and that's what we're using today. We'll start with our liquid ingredients. So I have one cup of whole milk. This is at room temperature. I'm also adding six large egg whites. These are also at room temperature. We're using egg whites, no egg yolks in this cake, because you know what happens if we add egg yolks. The yolks have a potent pigment that will turn the color of the cake yellow. So if you leave them out, you get a white cake. And that's what we want. So I'm also adding two teaspoons of vanilla. Now I'll just whisk this together until the whites are broken down and everything is smooth. Now I mentioned that the milk and the egg whites were at room temperature, and that's really important because we're going to be using some softened butter in the cake later on, and we don't want to affect the texture of the butter. Cold milk would make the butter get a little firmer. Okay, so we can move on to the dry ingredients. So we're using the stand mixer. I already have two and a quarter cups of cake flour. I'm also adding one and three quarter cups of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. And we'll just mix these together on low speed just so we can make sure that the leavener is combined with the other ingredients. Now, the method that we're using is called reverse creaming. Our method starts by incorporating the butter into our dry ingredients. So essentially, the flour is getting coated with butter and it's partially waterproofing it. So when we add the liquid ingredients to it, it's very difficult for gluten to form. So that's going to give us a more tender cake, more delicate crumb, and it's going to resist doming. So we have a flat cake, and that makes a good layer cake. So we'll turn this on low speed, and I have 12 tablespoons of softened butter. So I'm just adding this butter one piece at a time until all the butter is incorporated. We always like to use unsalted butter so that we can add salt as we need. And the butter should be about the size of small peas. This should take about a minute. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we have our pea-sized pieces. It's time to add our liquid ingredients, but I'm only adding half right now so that it will incorporate easily with the dry, and then we'll reserve the other half to add in a minute. So we'll mix this on medium-high speed for about a minute until it starts to look light and fluffy. Mmm, looks good and fluffy. It does, but it might not after we add the rest of it. It's true. It can look curdled. Curdled at this point is okay. Right. And we'll just do this on medium-low for All the last right. 30 seconds. It does look kind of grainy on the beater, so we'll take this off, and I'm just going to use my spatula to give it a final stir by hand. Now it's time to transfer it to our cake pans. We have three eight-inch cake pans. I've already greased the pans, then I lined them with parchment paper, greased them all again, then floured them. So there will be no sticking going on with these cakes. <laughs> you ensured that. <laughs> now, you could get out your scale mm -hmm. for the most accurate measurement, but we're gonna eyeball them, and I think between the two of us, we can see if they're even. I agree. So I'm just spreading them out so we have a nice even layer, and that'll also make it easier for us to tell if they're even. I could do this for hours. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a zen sand garden. <laughs> it really is. That looks pretty even. I think it looks I great. Think. So we have our cakes all ready to go. The oven is nice and hot at 350 degrees. The rack's in the middle position. All three of these cakes are going to go on the same rack. And we're going to bake them for 18 to 22 minutes. We're looking for a nice golden top. But halfway through baking, we'll go in and rotate and kind of <laughs> You're going to do the shell game. Shell game, exactly. <laughs> shell game of the cakes to make sure that they bake evenly. All right. Oh, oh that is a good smell. Mm -hmm. mm. They almost smell caramely. They really do. Oh. And nice and golden. See, this is the color we're going for. But let's test them, because we won't know until we toothpick them. It's a verb. <laughs> it's a verb. <laughs> I'm looking for no crumbs. We want these to be nice and clean. Perfect. I see no crumbs. Obviously, they're hot right now, so we'll let them sit on the racks in the pans for 10 minutes, and then we'll remove them from the pans and let them sit here on the racks for two hours so they're perfectly, completely cool. So let's get started 
This is a blueberry jam cake, so we're gonna make some jam. Now jam usually starts with some sugar. I have half a cup, and we're going to use the food processor to get this started. Now that's not a lot of sugar. No, it's gonna say. No, so we need pectin as well, but we're using pectin that's designed for low or no sugar added recipes. Mm -hmm. Two tablespoons, and then I'm just adding a pinch of salt. Now we'll just let this process for about three seconds until everything gets mixed together. I think that's good. Now, we originally envisioned this recipe with fresh summer blueberries, and they work, it's great, but what we found out is that you can actually use thawed frozen blueberries and have just as good of a jam, and then you can make the cake any time of year. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. So these have thawed already. This is 15 ounces or three cups. We'll pulse these about six to eight times, and we just wanna break down the berries a little bit and allow some of the juices and the pectin to be released six to eight pulses. We're just looking for a coarse chop. So now I'm gonna transfer these to my saucepan. This is a medium saucepan. I'm gonna heat this over medium heat for about six to eight minutes. We're looking for it to start bubbling and starting to thicken ever so slightly. So this has been bubbling merrily. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to turn off the heat. You can see that it has thickened a little bit. But ever not so slightly. Right, not a ton, and that's okay. We don't want to over thicken it now. This will continue to set and thicken as it sits. I'll take this totally off the heat because this burner is still hot. And I'm adding one tablespoon of lemon juice. And we always like to add that at the end so that the lemon flavor stays bright and fresh. Now, if you help me, I need to measure one and a third cups into that measuring cup. All right, I'll get down at eye level here. There we go. There? Yep. Great. This will be the filling between the layers of the cake. So I'm just going to cover it, and this is going to go in the refrigerator for about three hours. Everything I have left in here is going to go through that fine mesh strainer. This is going to color our frosting. Oh, you're making an all-natural food coloring. Mm -hmm but we wanted a really nice, smooth, beautiful frosting. So we're just pressing this through the fine mesh strainer so that we get all the juice in the bottom, but none of the speckles. So how much of the strained mixture do you really need for frosting the whole cake? We need about four tablespoons or a quarter cup. That's what should be coming through the strainer. Now this, we will let sit, but we're not going to chill this one. This we want to be able to mix it into our frosting. We're just gonna clean up this area and then we'll come back and make our frosting. All right. Now it's finally time to make the frosting. I love frosting. Me too. So I have one and a half cups of confectioner sugar already in the bowl. I'm adding eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, softened and cut into eight pieces. Now, if you would be so kind as to give me medium high speed, maybe ease your way up. I'll ease it up. We're gonna go for three minutes, make sure this is light and fluffy. That's what we're talking about. But it's sweet, and we have a sweet filling, and we have a sweet cake, so we're adding some cream cheese to our buttercream. We'll add a little bit of a tangy note to it, and it plays so nicely with the blueberries. So I have eight ounces of cream cheese. I've cut this up into eight pieces. Now you need to make sure that that cream cheese is softened. I'm going to add this one piece at a time. So I already have our first piece in there. We'll turn it back up to medium high and we'll let this go until all of the cream cheese is in there and we don't have any bits. We don't want to see big blobs of cream cheese in there. Gotcha. All right, can we turn that off please? Mm -hmm. You don't want to overbeat this, but once we tint the frosting, that's when you sometimes see bits of cream cheese. So it's worth it to take a couple extra seconds to make it smooth. So we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla, and then we will go back to our strained jam mixture that's just been sitting out at room temperature. I'm going to add two tablespoons of this to the frosting. And now we'll just let this go for a few seconds until everything is mixed together and you'll see a beautiful shade of purple start to emerge. So let's put this back on medium high to get this all mixed in. So that looks pretty cohesive. So I'll scrape all around the outside plus the divot of doom, as I like to call it, that, that gap on the it's bottom. That's a great name. <laughs> that looks pretty gorgeous. I think this is pretty smooth. So I'm going to transfer a third of a cup of the frosting to each of these two bowls. 
And until you get this on the cake, you have lots of opportunities to stir any streaks that you see. Okay, now we're not done yet because this is our master. So this is what we'll use for most of the cake, the biggest amount of it there. But I'm going to color these two. I'm adding a tablespoon of the jam to one of the bowls, either bowl. And then I'll add a teaspoon to the other bowl. You're making a purple color chart. <laughs> like at right. the paint store. Exactly, that's kind of what it's gonna look like. One thing to note though, it's not a bad idea to chill the darker colors while you're frosting the, the cake doing the crumb coat, just to keep it nice and firm. So Julia, the cakes are completely cool. They've been cooling for about two hours now. We'll be moving the cake on and off the turntable. So it really makes it easy to do that if we use a cardboard cake round. This is slightly smaller mm -hmm. than our cake so that we can frost all the way to the bottom of the cake. So this is about seven inches. So I'll move my first cake over. Now, before I put this on the turntable, we don't want it sliding all over the place. You need a little glue. A little glue. There we go. And that'll just anchor it a little bit. So now the first thing we'll do is we have to start adding our filling. So I'm going to transfer two thirds of a cup of my jam to that first cake layer. See how nicely it's firmed up? Yeah. All right, so we'll use my offset spatula to smooth this out from the center. We want a nice, even coating. And I'm not gonna put it all the way to the edge, we'll leave just a small gap because once we add two more layers of cakes to this, we don't want it to squeeze out the sides. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now we'll put the second cake on and just take your time. And remember, not all the way to the edge, just to leave a little bit of space for movement. Okay, now for our third layer, I'm actually going to invert this cake. So we have a perfectly level layer on the top. It is time to frost. Surgical precision, my friend. <laughs> we just wanna put a nice thin crumb coat on. Now the purpose of this is to actually capture all of the crumbs that are on the cake and encase them in that first layer of frosting. I like to do the sides first. It doesn't have to look pretty. We just wanna have a really nice thin layer around the whole cake. So I'm totally covered now, but I have more on than I need. So we really just want a very thin layer. So I'm gonna go around and just scrape off some of the excess. I'm gonna do the same thing with the top. Once I've finished the whole cake, then we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, just to set the frosting to make sure that it's really easy for us to finish frosting later. So our crumb coat is set, and it really makes it so much easier to do this next step. We're starting from the bottom and we'll work our way up. So a third of the cake will be the darkest, the middle third for the middle color, and then the top third will be the lightest. So I'll start at the bottom and I'm doing the same thing that I did when I did my crumb coat. And there will be plenty of this colored frosting. There's no need to be shy with it. We will blend these all together. So if there's a little bit where it's not a perfect third, it's totally fine. Okay, that looks pretty good for the first third. Gorgeous. Now we'll use the middle color. Wiping your spatula clean. I don't want to contaminate the other <laughs> color. I just want to get that middle third. Looks good. Yeah. Now this is one of those cakes where this part does not have to be perfect because once we finish this, we're going to employ a, a swooping action that's going <laughs> to even everything out and it's going to look fantastic. Now we're ready for the top third. Now this is the right color, but remember it was just a crumb coat. Now we'll do the top. See, the top's a dream after doing <laughs> the sides. Okay, so for this last step, I like to use a, a large offset spatula. What I'm gonna do is start with the offset spatula against the cake at the bottom of the cake against the turntable. And I'm going to start turning the cake and I'm slowly gonna start bringing my hand up towards the top. All right. Okay, so we'll have about, hmm, six swirls or so going up the sides. There we go. Ah, so see, cool. it blends the colors together. It smooths the side of the cake. Now what are you gonna do for the top? I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to start at the outside and work my way into the center. Okay. It's almost kaleidoscopic. <laughs> that is so cool, Christy. Isn't it fun? So we're going to chill this for 30 minutes in the refrigerator and then we're going to eat. All right, I'll be waiting. <laughs> Christy, 
That is one gorgeous cake. Now I'm going to cut into this cake. I feel like cake. I should do a drum roll for you. <laughs> I like the size of your cake pieces. Well, I just want to say that right off the bat. I want you to be able to see and appreciate this cake for what it is. So. Me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. A little bit of frosting, a little bit of cake, a little bit of jam. As it should mm. be. You know, it looks gorgeous, but it tastes amazing. Mm -hmm. The blueberry is such a clean flavor, not too sweet. The frosting is buttery, but that cream cheese adds that little bit of tang. It just makes it more interesting than mm -hmm. your average frosting. And the cake is perfect. It's light, not too dense. It's kind of like all the best parts of blueberry cheesecake, mm -hmm. but it's such a nice, delicate crumb. Mm. It's easy to slice. It just looks, it looks very impressive. Mm. Christy, this cake is straight up amazing. Looks stunning, tastes like perfection. Thank you. To make this showstopper of a cake, start with cake flour, egg whites, and the reverse creaming method to make three delicate layers of white cake. Cook blueberries, sugar, and pectin together to make a quick jam. Then make an easy frosting with softened butter, confectioner sugar, and cream cheese. Assemble the cake using some of the jam between the layers and tint the frosting with jam in order to achieve that gorgeous ombre effect. From Cook's Country, the ultimate recipe for blueberry jam cake. So good. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>